Number 1. First College Party My name is Nikki. I had a really weird experience back when I was in college that still haunts me to this day. When I was a freshman in college, I didn't experience the college experience the way many do. I didn't go to any of the football games, even though I'm a huge football fan. I didn't date any guys. I didn't even go to a single party. I was so thoroughly concerned with succeeding academically that I put 100% of my focus into my schoolwork. It paid off, and that I did get straight A's all year. But I did feel like I was missing out on what college was supposed to be like. So, as a sophomore, I decided to take part more socially. Not having made many college friends, this really wasn't very easy to do. I attended a few football games by myself. I tried to join some clubs, but I really had a problem connecting with a lot of the other members. Where I was successful in making friends, however, was in class. In several classes, when we were put together for group work, I was able to really connect with my fellow students. By October of my first sophomore semester, I was successful in making a few friends, and I got invited to a Halloween party. I was nervous going, and I guess I was right to be. Although I got to talk with a lot of my friends, it was only for short periods of time. It was a pretty wild party, and they had plenty of other people to talk to as well. Well, there was this guy who was dressed up as what I guess was an anime character, I wasn't really sure. He gave me a few looks across the room, before coming up to me. He said his name was Chris, and he asked me what I was drinking. I was having a rum and coke, and he told me how much he liked them. He offered to go and get me a new drink, and I was so happy at having someone talking to me that I accepted. He left, and a few minutes later came back with two rum and cokes. He handed me mine, and he started drinking his. After a while, he seemed to be getting hit really hard from the alcohol. He began slurring his words strongly. He eventually started swaying from being dizzy. I assumed he was either a real lightweight, or he had been drinking a lot beforehand. When he slunk against the wall, and seemed ready to pass out, I got concerned. Not knowing what to do, I sought out one of my friends. I told them he hadn't had too much to drink, and they called an ambulance just in case. I'll never forget exactly what happened. He had a bottle of Rohypnol in his pocket, and it was in his system, although I couldn't know for sure. I had an idea about what had happened. Rohypnol is a common date rape drug. I think Chris had gone to get drinks, and both drinks were rum and cokes. He roofied one of them, intending to give it to me, but forgot which one it was. He ended up drinking the roofied drink himself. I'll never forget how lucky I was that night. Number 2. Strange Roommate At my college, all freshmen had to live in the dorms, and they had to live in either a double or a triple. I was a bit nervous about sharing a room with another person, and this only got worse when I actually met this guy named Kyle. Kyle was really weird. He was sort of dark. I don't want to say he was goth or anything, because that's really not what he was. Yeah, he wore dark clothes and he was weird, but he took it to a level that was much more than just an odd fashion statement. He was involved with and believed in witchcraft, and I'm not just talking about Wicca or any of that sort of thing. He called the witchcraft he believed in black magic, and very often referred to the entities that he would pray to as demons. Now, I'm not particularly religious or anything, 
but everything he did just made me feel uncomfortable. Things with Kyle were at first just annoying. He would always want to be awake all night, and I always had to be up early for class. He would sit at his little altar and talk to his demons by candlelight and keep me awake throughout it all. So I took to wearing both earplugs and an eye-masked bed. One night, I was woken up by a lot of noise that even my earplugs couldn't keep out. When I peeked out from under my mask, Kyle was having a three-way with another girl and a guy on his bed. I just put my mask back on and pretended I hadn't seen it. These annoyances turned scary one day when I got home from class. Kyle, who usually hadn't paid much attention to me before, seemed excited to see me. He told me he was trying to communicate to one of his demons and that he needed someone's blood in order to do this. He asked if he could have some of mine. I turned him down, of course. He insisted that it wouldn't hurt. I told him I wasn't really concerned about the pain. I just didn't want him using my blood for some ritual. He kept on about it for a while, but I didn't relent. When he gave up, I could tell he was pretty pissed off at me. I really didn't care, because at least he left me alone for the rest of the night. As usual that night, I went to bed with my earplugs and my mask on. I'm not sure how long I had been sleeping before I had a sudden and sharp pain in my arm. I jumped up in bed, ripping the eye mask off. There was a large gash up my arm, and Kyle was kneeling next to my bed, holding the knife he used for his ceremonies. The guy had actually cut me and tried to take my blood. Enraged, I kicked him in the head, knocking him to the floor and the knife out of his hand. I ran out the door and headed straight to the RA's room and pounded on the door. She answered, saw what happened, and called the campus police. Kyle was arrested, and you could be damn sure I pressed charges against him. I know he was taken out of my room, and I assume removed from the school although technically I didn't know that for sure. I'm just happy I never saw the psychopath again, though. Number 3. Sleepwalker I knew I was going to have problems when I started living in the dorms. Growing up, I'd always had a room of my own. Being with another person was going to be pretty hard to get used to. When I met my roommate, he was actually a really nice guy. His name was Josh. We got along fine. Still, it was difficult for me to always have a person hanging around all the time. There was definitely no privacy for me anymore. About a month after I moved in, I was up studying late. Josh had been sleeping. He suddenly got out of his bed. He was only wearing his boxers. He got up, left the room in his underwear, and didn't come back for about an hour. I tried to ask him where he had gone, but he ignored me and went back to sleep. The next day, I brought this up to him, and he told me that he used to sleepwalk. He really hadn't in a long time, but had been concerned that he would start up again once he had been going to college. He told me that it was normally not a big deal. He'd probably just walk around a bit. He said I could try to wake him up, because apparently the rule that you're not supposed to wake up a sleepwalker isn't really true. Over the next few weeks, Josh did sleepwalk a few more times. I did wake him up once or twice, Sometimes I couldn't, however, because he would leave while I was sleeping. When he came back into the room was generally when I would wake up and notice he was gone. The sleepwalking really wasn't that big of a deal until one night. Like I mentioned, it would always just involve him walking around in his boxers. But one night, it took an odd turn. I was sleeping, 
and I heard some strange noises which woke me up. I wasn't paying much attention to it until I heard the sound of something hitting the floor. Opening my eyes, I was immediately shocked. Josh had opened the window and taken the screen out of it. He climbed up on the windowsill of our second story dorm room window. Before I could stop him, he fell out of the window as if it were nothing. Freaked, I ran to the window and looked down. Josh was lying there in his boxers on the ground. There were a few students outside who had witnessed it. I ran out of the dorm, still just in my own boxers, and ran downstairs. I told the people around him that I was his roommate, and that he was a sleepwalker. Fortunately, he had survived the fall. Apparently, he had landed on his feet, but the shock of the fall broke both his legs. Josh was okay and didn't remember anything about what had happened, or at least as okay as you can be with two broken legs. I know this might not seem scary to you, but you just need to picture it. Imagine waking up and seeing your friend just drop out of a second story window as if it were nothing. I was terrified. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please hit the subscribe button below, or use the button that will appear at the end of this video. Feel free to leave a comment to let me know what you thought of the video, and share it with someone you think might enjoy it. If you're really bored, you can always follow Ichigo and myself on Facebook and Twitter. If you have an original true scary story, an original fiction scary story, or an idea for a top 5 list, please let me know. I hope you enjoy these stories, they were slightly shorter than what I usually narrate, but I really enjoyed them all. Definitely let me know what you think. And as always, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed. Because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.